Good morning, church family. I am excited to continue in our study through Jonah titled Running with Jonah. Go ahead and get your Bibles out if you've not already. Open them to Jonah chapter 3. Get pen and paper out. As always, we want to make sure that we are writing down all the truth that God shares with us, the points that the Holy Spirit makes with us. It's great for us to write them down, uh, to remember them, and then to apply them in our day-to-day -day lives. So let's look at Jonah chapter 3. I'm going to do a quick review. We left off last session uh, with verses 1 and 2. Uh, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Get up, go to the great city of Nineveh, and preach the message that I tell you. We shared how each of these verses were full of encouragement for us. We see in the first verse that the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. God is the God of second chances, third and fourth chances for you and for me. This is great encouragement for us. We see in the second verse, God gave the same, same call, the same message, the same commission to Jonah in chapter 3 that he did in chapter 1. The same call, go, the same city, Nineveh, the same commission, preach the message that I give you. And so great encouragement from verses 1 and 2, which lead us now into verse 3. Jonah got up and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's command. Now Nineveh was an extremely great city. First chapter, Jonah said no. This time in chapter 3, Jonah said yes, and he went to Nineveh. So we see a couple points about Nineveh real quick. Nineveh was a great city in size. Uh, we see that it was a, a three-day walk. And so you can look at Nineveh. Scholars have told us that it's probably similar in size to the Dallas Metroplex. Which you, when you consider the suburbs around Dallas, uh, that's probably a, a similar size uh, to Nineveh. All the surrounding suburbs around Nineveh, it would take a, a three-day walk just to get around to see Nineveh. And so we know that Nineveh was great in the, its size, its strength, and its violence. Uh, we know that in regards to the population, biblical scholars estimate that there could have been anywhere between 600,000 and a couple of million folks living in Nineveh at this time. So it was great in size. Second, Nineveh was a, a city that was great in its sin sin and sexual immorality and idolatry and drunkenness and cruelty was rampant in Nineveh. So we continue in verse 4. Jonah set out on the first day of his walk in the city and proclaimed in 40 days Nineveh will be demolished. Now we don't know all the details about the message, but we do know a couple of points about this message. Number one, Jonah's message was clear. These folks that lived in Nineveh heard the message and they understood the message. Uh, Jonah's message was clear. It is seven words in English, five words in Hebrew. In 40 days, Nineveh will be demolished. How's that for an encouraging word to start your day? In 40 days, Nineveh will be demolished. So the message was clear. Secondly, we know the message was God's. This was God's message. Again, the message that he had given to Jonah to share with the people of Nineveh. It wasn't Jonah's message. It wasn't Jonah's thoughts. It wasn't Jonah's opinions. It wasn't Jonah's ideas. This message was from God. And like Jonah, God gives us his message, his truth, his word, uh, his love to share to all those around us. And we are to faithfully share God's message on a day-by-day -day basis. So we continue in verse 5. Then the people of Nineveh, get this, believed God. They proclaimed a fast and dressed in sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least. What a scene. What an amazing response. The people of Nineveh, from the greatest to the least, they turned to God in repentance and faith in God. This is an awesome scene. God used Jonah, the reluctant prophet, in his work of changing the Ninevites' lives. And so we have been given a great message to share. It's the gospel message that Jesus saves. And we share and God saves, just like we see here with Jonah. So let's continue and read in verse 6. When the word reached the king of Nineveh, so when the word of what was going on with the people in Nineveh reached the king, he got up from his throne, took off his royal robe, put on sackcloth, and sat in ashes. 
Then he issued a decree in Nineveh by order of the king and his nobles. No person or animal, herd or flock, is to taste anything at all. They must not eat or drink water. Furthermore, both people and animals must be covered with sackcloth, and everyone must call out earnestly to God. Each must turn from his evil ways and from his wrongdoing. Who knows? God may turn and relent. He may turn from his burning anger so that we will not perish. Are you kidding? What an incredible response from the king of Nineveh. The people of Nineveh, the king of Nineveh, turned to God in repentance and faith in God. And we see that it was real. They responded and showed their faith in God by their obedience to God. We see that sitting in sackcloth and sitting in ashes and making sure they had sackcloth on, fasting from water and from food, calling out earnestly to God, turning from their evil ways and their wrongdoing, uh, not just the people, but the nobles, the king. We see these are all signs of the repentance and the faith in God. Man, the message of God through the messenger for God got through to the Ninevites. And the Ninevites responded to God in an amazing way. No doubt, Jonah had probably told the Ninevites that God was a forgiving God, that God was a God of second chances, that God was a compassionate God, slow to anger, abounding in love. And there's no question that the Ninevites were hoping that this would be true for them, as it had been true for Jonah, that it would be true for them. Because you see in verse 9, the king said, who knows, God may turn and relent. He may turn from his burning anger so that we will not perish. They probably knew of how God turned uh, in uh, forgiveness towards Jonah. And Jonah more than likely had shared some of this with these Ninevites. And they were hoping and praying that that's how God would respond to them. So we continue in verse 10. God saw their actions so that they had turned from their evil ways. He saw their actions. He saw that they turned from their evil ways, that they cried out to him, that they confessed their sin to him, that they repented. So God relented from the disaster he had threatened them with, and he did not do it. He did not demolish Nineveh in 40 days. Instead, he heard their prayers. He saw their repentance. He knew of their faith, and he relented from demolishing them. And instead, he received them because of their repentance and their faith and trust in him. What an awesome scene. What an awesome celebration. This is one of the greatest evangelistic crusades in all of scripture. And so we see this amazing scene unfold with Jonah now finally running with God and seeing the power of God at work in and through his lives and through his life and the lives of the Ninevites. And God has given us a great message to share. It's the message of the gospel. It's the message that we can receive forgiveness of sins and enter into a relationship with God by God's grace through our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Not, not by our works, but through faith and trust in Jesus Christ because of his death burial and resurrection because of his work on the cross of Calvary for you and for me. This message is the message that we get to share every day throughout the day. And we share this message in God's strength for God's glory. We share this message knowing that God is with us just as he was with Jonah. He's with us. And as we share the message in God's strength for God's glory, we get to see God do his work of changing lives for eternity all around us. He's changed our life. We know he can change others' lives. And so like Jonah, we know the task ahead of us is never greater than the power that is in us. The task that Jonah had, go to Nineveh and preach the message I give to you was a great task, but it was not greater than the power in Jonah and the task that God gives us each day to share the good news of the gospel is certainly not greater than the power that is in us. God is with us and he empowers us to share his message in his strength for his glory. We just get the pleasure of a front row seat 
of watching God work. I hope and pray that that's what God does in your life and in my life today, that he gives us opportunities to share his message, the good news of the gospel, the message that Jesus saves throughout today and the rest of this week. And as he gives us these opportunities, that we step forward in faith and trust in him, knowing that he is with us and that he will help us share his message. Father God, I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ today. God, I pray that uh, we would do just what Jonah did, that we would walk in your strength, that we would share your message for your glory with your love and strength. God, knowing that as we do, as we share, God, you're faithful to save. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for today. Pray you will bless us in every way today. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I hope you're blessed today as you live for Jesus.